Families of coronavirus victims will be given the right to say goodbye as the health secretary admits seeing the funeral of 13. Year. Old made him weep. Matt Hancock said seeing images of the funeral of Ismail Muhammad Abdul Wahab, the 13. Year. Old who died of coronavirus, had huge impact on him. At today's Downing Street press briefing, he said, I've been really moved and upset by some of the heartbreaking stories of people dying without loved one nearby. As father of 13, year, old myself, the reports of Ismail, dying aged 13, without parent at his bedside, made me weep, and the sight of his coffin being lowered into grave without his family present, was too awful. Ismail's funeral took place on April 3, but his mother and six siblings were forced to self, isolate at their home in Brixton and were unable to attend. Hancock is announcing guidance giving relatives the chance to pay final visit to two elderly family members who are terminally ill with COVID-19 to give people the right to say goodbye. The new procedures are so that wherever possible people will be given the chance to say goodbye to loved ones dying with coronavirus. It was unclear tonight exactly what the new procedures Hancock announced were or what would change or what it would mean for younger people dying of the virus or those not in care homes. For care homes, new guidance was issued today reiterating guidance that already existed that visits can happen for end of life care. It was less clear how the situation has changed in hospitals, such as the one where 13 year old Ismail died alone. A. Spokesperson for the Department of Health and Social Care told The Mirror. This action plan covers visits to care homes but existing NHS guidance sets out how people can remain in contact with their loved ones at the end of their lives. And separate government source also pointed to NHS England advice issued week ago that said visits can still happen for those close to death. The advice, dated April 8, said, Visiting is suspended with immediate effect and until further notice, the only exceptional circumstances where one visitor and immediate family member or carer will be permitted to visit include the patient you wish to visit as receiving end of life care. The health secretary said tonight that wanting to be with someone you love at the end of their life is one of the deepest human instincts. I am pleased to say that working with Public Health England, the care sector and many others, we are introducing new procedures so we can limit the risk of infection while wherever possible giving people's closest loved ones the chance to say goodbye, he said. Hancock also said the government was making crystal clear that it is unacceptable for advanced care plans including do not resuscitate orders to be applied in blanket fashion to any group of people. This must always be personalized process, as it always has been, he said. He added, wanting to be with someone you love is one of the deepest human instincts, and it's moment that will be with you forever. Done right, it can help those left behind to cope, and it brings comfort to those who are dying. Coronavirus of course, has made this much more difficult. The right to say goodbye was pledged today in 34, page action plan on care homes from the government. Technically the right is not new at all, but officials admitted they had to reinforce the position after confusion about the rules. Previously guidance said people should not make unnecessary visits to care homes, apart from in exceptional situations such as end of life. A government source told The Mirror. The problem is that people have taken this to mean they shouldn't go in any circumstance. So we are being very clear. And being explicit in the action plan, that we consider end of life visits reasonable. The new action plan says, whilst we have recommended care homes limit unnecessary visits, we are clear that visits at the end of life are important both for the individual and their loved ones and should continue. Our guidance has set out steps care homes should take to ensure appropriate infection control during these visits. We will continue to work with the sector to develop and share best practice on how to enable visits at the end of life in safe and compassionate way. Hancock has told the Care Quality Commission to tell care homes to tear up any agreements that would stop residents getting access to full health care if they choose it. Some families report having to sign DNR agreements meaning that if their relative became severely ill with coronavirus there would be no attempt to revive them from heart or respiratory failure. The Mirror has approached the Department of Health and Social Care for clarification on how this right to say goodbye will affect those not in care. Homes. Hancock denied suggestions that the lives of younger people had been prioritized at the expense of those in care homes and that people had died unnecessarily. The health secretary said, No, neither of those things is the case. 
He said one of the first things discovered about COVID-19 was that the elderly were badly affected by the disease. Therefore it was clear that, especially for care settings supporting older people and it's also true for care settings that support people of working age we were going to have to have. Particular focus, he said. Deputy Chief Scientific Advisor Dame Angela McLean said there was huge question about how to protect care homes which do not yet have cases. Mr. Hancock said. The decision to admit somebody into hospital must be clinical decision based on individual circumstances, not blanket rule. And on the discharge, of course the best place for people who clinically are able to be discharged is to get them home. So of course there is policy that when people are clinically ready for discharge that they should be. Discharged, mean that's the nature of hospitals, that's true all of the time. But it's got to be made on that individual, clinical diagnosis of what's best for that individual patient. Chief Medical Officer Professor Chris Witte added. Staying hospital is neither for most people particularly pleasant experience and it is also an area where you are actually more likely to catch infections and other issues than you are in any other setting. And it is sensible for older and indeed all patients to keep hospital stays as short as us. Medically, or from nursing point of view, sensible. Also at today's Downing Street press briefing, Hancock claimed the spare capacity of beds in critical care had reached new high. He also paid special tribute to Captain Tom Moore who, at the age of 99, has raised over £7 million so far for NHS charities by completing 100 laps of his garden. He added, Captain Tom, you're an inspiration to us all and we thank you. The fundraising page for Captain Tom Moore passed the £8 million mark at 5.30pm today, moments after his. Achievements were praised by the health secretary at the government's daily press briefing. Announcing single brand for social care, Hancock said social care workers would get new badge and he has asked supermarkets to recognize it and give them the same priority as NHS workers. He added that we aim to recruit tens of thousands more people into social care. Also at today's press briefing, Chief Medical Officer Chris Whitty said the UK was probably near the peak of the coronavirus epidemic but it's too early to be sure enough to consider lifting the Lockdown and he predicted an increase in death figures in the coming days. Our view is that it is probably reaching the peak overall, he said. But he said the death figures always lag behind slightly, causing bounce few days after weekend. And this may be more pronounced after four day weekend. He added, We do all think that this has flattened out. Sadly, we do think high numbers of deaths will continue, certainly for short while on from where we are at the moment. I think at the Moment we're not at the point where we can say confidently and safely this is now past the peak and we can start thinking very much about the next phases. The announcements come on day in which the government finally pledged COVID-19 tests to all care home staff and residents who need one. Hancock announced there is finally enough capacity after weeks of complaints care homes were being left behind. This after Downing Street prompted fury by admitting just 505 social care workers had been tested for the virus. And until today, only the first five symptomatic residents in care home setting were being tested simply to provide confirmation of whether there is an outbreak. Tomorrow the government is expected to extend the current restrictions until at least May 7. Dominic Robb, who is standing in for Prime Minister Boris Johnson while he recovers from COVID-19, will tell Brits that they will have to remain at home for at least another three weeks as ministers grapple with an exit strategy. The lockdown has to be reviewed by law every three weeks, and the first review must be carried out by Thursday this week. But government officials have already made clear there is next to zero chance of restrictions being lifted this week. Work and Pensions Secretary Therese Coffey warned today. We're talking about battle against coronavirus that isn't going to be over in weeks it will take months. And Chief Scientific Advisor Sir Patrick Valance warned Britain must first be firmly on the other side of the peak of new cases and deaths. Today the UK death. Toll neared 13,000 with rise of 801 in 24 hours. The new total is 12,958 although that includes only hospital deaths with the toll feared to be far higher when fatalities in care homes are taken into account. The total figure yesterday for the UK with England, Wales, Northern Ireland and Scotland combined was 12,157.